If you have experienced an auto accident, fall from height, motorcycle accident, construction accident, bicycle accident, or slip and fall, give Birkin a call. I'm attorney Robert Birkin. Give me a call at 716-855-FALL. My team of attorneys are here to help you. The law offices of Robert Birkin are in the Main Place Tower, 350 Main Street, Suite 2150 in downtown Buffalo. You can also connect online at robertburkin.com. In this special presentation, find out how you or your loved ones in Western New York can get the representation they need if they have been injured. Now, welcome Lisa Christie and me, Anthony Crawford. Hello, I'm Lisa Christie. And I'm Anthony Crawford. If you or a loved one has experienced any of these situations and have been injured, then attorney Robert Birkin can help you. In this program, we'll share important information that you need to know and how attorney Robert Birkin was able to help people just like you who have been injured. You may think injuries won't happen to you, but if they do, call Robert Birkin at 855-FALL with more information at robertburkin.com. And we'll meet Robert Birkin in a moment, but first, hear the stories of people just like you and how the law offices of Robert Birkin helped others. One area that the law offices of Robert Birkin excels in is slip and fall accidents. While driving to work, I stopped to fill up my tank. The pump was pretty slow, so I decided to go inside the store and get a lottery ticket. I got my numbers, a coffee, and headed back outside. I took about two steps, hit some ice, and my feet just flew right out from under me. I landed square on my lower back real hard. My back was in really bad shape. I was out of work for months. My lottery ticket was not a winner, but the law officers of Robert Birkin came through for me. They got me a settlement of $280,000. Thanks, Robert Birkin. Right now, it's time to meet attorney Robert Birkin and find out what you need to know in a slip and fall case. And it's great to meet you, Robert. So in the instance of a slip and fall, what should someone do immediately after an accident? Well, first I'd say it's nice to meet you, Lisa and Anthony. Uh, what someone should do is first to see if they're injured. They have to see if they're hurting. Uh, you know, care about yourself first. Uh, if you are really hurt, call 911 right away. You gotta get help. You need a doctor there. You got to go to the hospital. If you break something, uh, you, you broke your tibia, fibula, mm -hmm. wh wh whatever it is, Get, get, get help right away. Uh, if you're with someone, ask them if they could, besides helping you physically, take pictures of the scene. It's very important because the situation could change. Uh, if you slip and fall on snow or ice, uh, it, it can melt in three, four hours. Uh, it could get worse. You know? So it's very important to, to memorialize that scene. It's the same as if it's, uh, let's say, broken sidewalk, uh, broken driveway. Just memorialize it because the situation can change and it's very important. So when the, you're taking pictures, you want to make sure you get this, you get this, the whole scene, not too up close. Correct. Okay. Th th that's very important okay. because you have to know, you have to show, the, the pictures have to show where you are right. and, and that's important, yes. Uh, also, get the names of any witnesses and their phone numbers because these could be people you'll never see again. So that's very important. Does location matter? It can be very important, yes. Uh, let's say it was on a public sidewalk, but it's abutting someone's property. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on what town you're in, the property owner could be liable for your injuries. Now, in western New York, most towns and most cities, the property owner is responsible for the upkeep of their sidewalk, including, you know, if it's snow or ice, if it's a broken sidewalk, a raised sidewalk, and someone falls and seriously injured, the homeowner is responsible for that. So it all depends. Now, not every single town has that ordinance, but the majority of towns in Erie County Thank does. Thank God we don't. <laughs> we don't have sidewalks. Yeah. So the majority of towns do in Western New York have the certain ordinance that the property owner is responsible in that mm -hmm. situation. So it is important. Uh, there's also issues of statute of limitations that go on, and it has to do with the cities, uh, but th that's a different topic right now. And then give the law offices of Robert Birkin a call at 855-FALL. That's 855-3255. And one of their skilled attorneys will begin working with you one-on-one -on -one to begin your claim in order to get the best results possible. They'll be able to answer your questions and guide you through the legal process. I slipped and fell on some ice, and Robert Birkin got me $350,000. 
If someone fails to maintain their property and you are injured by a slip or fall, don't wait. Give me a call. Slip or fall? Give Birkin a call. 855-FALL. That's 855-FALL. I slipped and fell on ice, and Robert Birkin got me $700,000. If someone fails to maintain their property and you are injured by a slip or fall, don't wait. Give me a call. Slip or fall? Give Birkin a call. 855-FALL. That's 855-FALL. Welcome back. Here are more examples of real cases that Robert Birkin and his team have handled. Slips and falls could happen in any situation, with uneven sidewalks or due to loose or non-existent handrails. Ever since my uncle passed away, I've helped look after my aunt with general errands. One day I had her dry cleaning in one hand and her seeded marble rye bread in the other when I tripped and fell on the sidewalk. I went face first into the concrete, hurting my left arm. The sidewalk wasn't even in front of the bakery. I had a fracture and nerve damage. The doctors were afraid I might need a tendon transfer. While recuperating, I couldn't even work, drive, or take care of my aunt. But I could reach out to the law offices of Robert Birkin. And after all that, I got a settlement of $150,000. And I'm back taking care of my aunt again. Thanks, Robert Birkin. My life is busy. I got remarried last year, started on my master's degree, and my wife and I are expecting a baby. So I started making food deliveries for restaurants to make some extra money. One busy night I dropped off an order at a home that had concrete steps on their front porch. There was light snow falling. I didn't want to risk slipping, so I grabbed hold of the iron railing. But as soon as I leaned on it, the railing went down and I went down with it. I saw a doctor and found out that I really messed up my knee and wrist. That meant no food delivery, no extra money coming in and lots of physical therapy for my injury. But I did connect with the law offices of Robert Birkin, and they got me a settlement of $200,000. What a great help for our family. Thanks, Robert Birkin. Robert, in the situation we just saw, it is important to take immediate action, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, it's important to just, if you call me right away, so we can get on the case, get investigators, and someone should really should call 855-FALL, which is 855-3255, and my legal team will be right on the case. So how long do you legally have to reach out to make a claim? Depends on the situation, but normally the statute of limitations is a period of three years from the date of accident, uh, normally. However, if it happened on a municipality, uh, it was on their property, it's a, you have to first do a 90-day notice of claim, which my office does, okay. uh, and that's to be done within the first 90 days. And then the lawsuit would happen to take place within one year and 90 days. Now, there's also other exceptions because of someone's age, if they're under 18. Also in medical malpractice cases, which would be normally two and a half years, with exceptions also. Uh, but normally, generally, in like a car accident, slip and fall case, motorcycle case, Generally, it's a three-year statute of limitations from the date someone was injured. And things may be different based on where the incident took place, right? Yes, yes, as, as we stated, yes, depending as a municipality uh, or a private person who, who uh, is the defendant in that matter. So don't wait. Give the law offices of Robert Birkin a call at 855-FALL, and in a moment you'll find out what you need to do if you are involved in a car or a motorcycle accident. If you've been injured in an automobile or motorcycle accident, hit on a bicycle, injured from a slip or fall, give Robert Birkin a call, 855-FALL. That's 855-FALL. If you've been injured in an accident due to someone else's negligence in an automobile, motorcycle, bicycle, slip or fall, give me a call. The law offices of Robert Birkin has experience in this area. Hurt in an accident or from a slip or fall, give Birkin a call, 855-FALL. That's 855-FALL. Welcome back. The law offices of Robert Birkin can help you because an automobile, motorcycle, bicycle, or truck accident can happen at any time. My daughter, Caitlin, is one of those kids that's almost too careful about things, always gets her homework done early, and lays her clothes out for the next day. She's on top of things. When she rides her bike, it's no different. Her helmet is always on, she looks out for other people, and obeys all traffic rules. When she was hit by a car, I never assumed it was her fault. Caitlin had stopped at a stop sign and was crossing the intersection. A car made a sudden left turn, no signal. 
and hits Caitlin, knocking her off her bike. She really hurt her shoulder, leg, and ankle. I talked to the law offices of Robert Bergen. They were able to get us a settlement of $250,000. Caitlin is doing better now and is back riding her bike. Thanks, Robert Bergen. I don't work in an office. I'm an electrician. I was driving to my second job of the day when a car made a sudden left turn in front of me. I tried to swerve out of the way, but we still hit pretty hard. My truck was totaled. Most of my equipment was destroyed too. It's one thing to replace a vehicle. It's a whole other situation rebuilding your professional toolkit. My neck, shoulder, and back were pretty messed up. It was a big problem for an electrician. Luckily, I got the help I needed from the law offices of Robert Birkin. They were able to plug me in with a settlement of $750,000. Thanks, Robert Birkin. Robert, what kinds of information do you and your legal team need? Well, first you need basic information. Uh, you need, you know, just date of birth. Uh, you need address. Uh, you need emergency contacts, uh, that type of information. But then you need details of what happened. You know, the date it happened, uh, what time it happened, the weather conditions, uh, what specifically happened, uh, what your injuries are we need. We need, let's say someone hurt their neck or back, whatever, whatever it is, you need to know if they have any prior problems or neck or back. Uh, and you need to know who the witnesses are. Are there witnesses? Uh, who saw you? When was it first reported? When did you go to the hospital? Uh, you need all that information. You have to know if you made any statements. Did you make any statements to insurance companies? We need all that information. Also, are there any photographs taken? Were photographs taken? Is there any video? Was it a store? Could there be a video? Could we get this video? Uh, we need to get, see if we can get this information. Uh, and that's where initially we, we try to find. So is it necessary to call the police? Well, it depends on the situation, uh, but usually not. If it's a car accident, a lot of times police will, will be there, especially if someone, maybe someone hit you and they're intoxicated, uh, or someone is on drugs, something of that nature. So. It, in the car accident, they will be coming. A slip and fall case, if there's an ambulance come, sometimes uh, the police will come with. But in a slip and fall case, it wouldn't be necessary. In a car, it's really not necessary if you can get all the information. Uh, but it, it, it does happen. Okay. What about how this will impact the client's ability to make money? Oh, it's a huge impact. Depending on how a person got hurt. If someone got hurt in the slip and fall case, there's no money up front. You don't get any lost wages up front. It's a tremendous impact. You don't, your weight, your, the medical expenses aren't paid. So you have to use, if it's a slip and fall case where you slip and fall and you got hurt and you get hurt very badly and you can't work, first you have to use your own health insurance. If you don't have health insurance, you're going to have enormous medical bills. In regarding your wages, there is nothing, there's no insurance of the property that does not, generally does not cover anything. Now, if it's a situation where there's a car accident, a car accident are different because something called no fault. Now, no fault doesn't mean the other person's not at fault or you're at fault. It's just the term that we use. Now, if you're the driver or you're a passenger, the car you're in, that's you use that no, it's called the no fault insurance. So use that insurance. But let, so let's say someone hits you from behind and you're a passenger. Even though the person from behind caused the accident, you're using the insurance from the vehicle itself that you're in. And what that does is that will pay for your medical expenses and your lost wages generally up to the first $50,000. After that, there are other policies. Some people have them, some do not. Robert, so you also handle construction workplace and fall from height cases. So how complex are those cases? Well, it's a different type of law. It's not always based upon uh, normal tort law where there's negligence. These are called 240 or 241 labor law type cases. It's a situation, let's say someone's a roofer, painter, someone's on a scaffold doing construction work, mm -hmm. and there's, say there's no harness, whatever the reason is, and they fall. And the, the injuries, when you fall from a height, can be devastating. You know, just think of a basketball pole or rim, it's 10 feet. Well, sometimes people fall 10, 20, you know, 30, 40 feet right. from a house, the top of a house, of a roof or a construction site, and you're landing on cement. Well, someone's injuries are, are devastating. And the law, you put it, the law is called a 240 labor law case. It's a strict liability type case, and the person falls for a height, and it's a, if it's a commercial property, 
that they could be the person who owns the property or the contractor could be considered strictly liable. Now, it depends on what the situation is of who owns the property and what's a property for at that period of time. But if it's a commercial property and you're putting, say, a roof on, the person who is the owner or the general contractor would be responsible under 240 labor law or 241 labor law. If it's a residential uh, property, say your, your own home, and someone's putting a new roof on and they fall from height, generally they're not, a person is not individual, resident owner is not responsible, except if they directed or controlled the work. So if someone reaches out for your help and we know you're the best, how much does all of this cost? Well, there is no fee unless I get money for the injured party, and it's, then it's a percent. And we know you welcome your clients into your office or you connect over the phone or even virtually. Yes, that is correct, Lisa. We, we do virtual. Uh, we do over the phone. Initially, it's really it's over the phone initially, uh, but we can do vir virtual. Uh, we go to someone to meet them. We'll go to their house. We, if they're in the hospital, still will go to the hospital if that's what they want to do. Uh, they can come to our office. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible for the client, for the injured party. Uh, my associates, they will go to someone's house. A lot of times people are just you know, too injured to, to, to leave. So mm -hmm. we just try to make it as easy as possible for the person. You can't do this alone, but we understand you have a top legal team to help. Y yes, Anthony, we have a great legal team. Uh, teams that comes together. Our lawyers, exceptional. Uh, they're diversified. They have great uh, trial experience. Uh, lawyers who've been in the military and the J Corps for years. Uh, just personable people who are really, really good, hardworking lawyers who really care about the clients and they really want to help them out. And I believe that's what our, our team tries to do. Uh, we do try to do the best we possibly can for our clients. Uh, and regarding diversified, our team, there's different languages spoken to make people who are not so fluent in English, we help them out. One person speaks Spanish and Portuguese, another speaks Italian and French. Uh, so it could help well, people out in that, that type of situation, but I think we just have a great team. Uh, we're united and we really want the best for our clients. And nice. we know that your wife is involved in the medical area of your practice, so we look forward to meeting Dr. Rose Birkin next. If you have experienced an auto accident, fall from height, motorcycle accident, construction accident, bicycle accident, or slip and fall, give Birkin a call. I'm attorney Robert Birkin. Give me a call at 716-855-FALL. My team of attorneys are here to help you. The law offices of Robert Birkin are in the Main Place Tower, 350 Main Street, Suite 2150 in downtown Buffalo. You can also connect online at robertburkin.com. It was my birthday, of course, and four of us from work went out for dinner. We had cake, open gifts. It was a really good time. When it was time to leave, we were walking through the back parking lot, walking to our cars, when I just went down. I mean, I fell flat on my face. There was this big pothole right there in the parking lot. My right hand was hurting, but I figured I'm okay. The next day, my hand still hurt a lot when I drove, typed, or picking up a coffee cup. Turns out I had two fractured bones in my right hand. After going to the doctor, I went to the law offices of Robert Birkin. They got me $163,000. Thanks, Robert Birkin. When handling cases, you need solid medical information. The Birkin team has the best resources available. And we welcome Dr. Rose Birkin, who has quite an impressive resume. Dr. Rose Birkin is a graduate of the University at Buffalo Medical School. A board certified anesthesiologist. and founder and CEO of Northeast Ambulatory Anesthesia. We 
we'd like to welcome Dr. Rose Birkin. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Anthony. Dr. Birkin, what is your involvement with the Birkin firm? My job is to look at the medical records. There are two sets of medical records. One set that is the product of the patient treatment, surgeries, the patient's personal physicians, and another set of records is documentation by independent medical physician that works for the insurance company. Well, tell us more about how you evaluate patients' medical records. Well, I, as you can imagine, patients' medical records are pretty complicated and they can be thousands of pages long. Mm -hmm. So I concentrate on the important parts, summarize that, and uh, basically translate from uh, medical language to the language that attorneys can easily understand. And what about independent medical evaluations? Well, those are different. They are performed on behalf of the insurance company, mm -hmm. and physician who does the physical exam really doesn't have the patient's uh, interest at heart. So what I look for is any type of inconsistencies, omissions in the evaluation, or sometimes flat out lies mm. and exaggerations. Compare that to the actual medical record and provide that to the attorneys that are on the case. Another thing I do is look at the physician who actually did the physical exam. Are they qualified to do this exam? Do they have enough expertise in the field to review the medical records. Um, do they have their own practice or are they solely working for the insurance company? So you're like a private investigator. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I am. I also look at to see whether they have any publications. Those are important because the conclusions in the publications may contradict whatever they're saying on this particular case. So I do that, I summarize it and again I give it to the attorneys. Robert. The medical review is not necessarily independent, is it? No, not really. Uh, it, in theory, it's supposed to be. Uh, the IME is the defendant in these matters. Uh, what their insurance company would hire the doctor. Their doctor is getting paid by the insurance company. So right off the bat, it's just hard for them to be 100% independent. Uh, and some are. Some are just, you know, very objective, but some are extremely subjective to the side of the insurance company. And having Dr. Birkin with our team is such a tremendous advantage. I think very few firms would, would have that advantage, that she can point out the inconsistencies. She, she could see it, what, what they were doing, how the certain doctors would omit uh, very critical evidence or, or injuries uh, for their own advantage. Uh, and she's able to detect and, and just point that out right away. And, you know, with her experience and her knowledge, it's such a huge advantage for us. Uh, there was a trial we once had where she was able to see a prior uh, publication the doctor wrote. And it contradicted what he testified to on the stand. And I'm cross-examining him. And I was able to use the publication that she found that he wrote and I was able to discredit him. And it, the results were, were, were wonderful in, my, in the plaintiff's favor. Having a medical professional on your team, and it's great that it's your wife, I would think it's unique for law firms in Western New York. I would think we're one of the few law firms who has this direct access uh, to a medical doctor. Uh, I can't say for all firms, but I'm, I'm pretty sure one of the very few in Western New York who has that advantage of having someone on our team who's a medical doctor. Robert, may we ask how you met and how long you've been married? Well, we've been married 25 years. <laughs> we have three children. Uh, we met a long time ago at the BAC on Niagara Falls Boulevard. Mm. Uh, I was walking by and she was on the Stairmaster and I had my Zubas on. It was a very good look for me. You're, you're aging uh, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that look and I couldn't say no. Well, her, her, her Stairmaster wasn't working. She thought I worked there. She asked for my assistance and I am very technically challenged, but uh, I pretended I knew what I was doing. I had no idea what I was doing, but I did end up getting her phone number that night. Wonderful. And we've been together since. Robert, tell us a little bit about yourself, how and where you grew up, and where you went to school? Yeah, I was born in Buffalo, uh, then, we, then uh, I went to high school in, in Waynesville. Uh, I have two older brothers. Uh, then I went to George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Uh, graduated from there, 
And then I went to law school in San Diego. Nice. Um, and then I was in, uh, I'm a member of the uh, Florida and New York Bar. Dr. Rose Birkin, thanks for joining us. After this break, we will have some fast facts to round up our presentation with attorney Robert Birkin. I slipped and fell on some ice, and Robert Birkin got me $350,000. If someone fails to maintain their property and you are injured by a slip or fall, don't wait. Give me a call. Slip or fall? Give Birkin a call. 855-FALL. That's 855-FALL. I slipped and fell on ice, and Robert Birkin got me $700,000. If someone fails to maintain their property and you are injured by a slip or fall, don't wait. Give me a call. Slip or fall? Give Birkin a call. 855-FALL. That's 855-FALL. In our remaining moments, we have some quick questions to get you some fast facts. How do you handle a motorcycle accident? Well, I've handled many motorcycle cases, and the injuries on a motorcycle can be devastating. You know, there, there's no shell, there's no protection like in a car. But also, you have to know is there's no, there's not a no-fault policy. That's generally there's not. So, yours, there's no really your own insurance. So it's a part of a case when you sue someone for lost wages or medical expenses, but no money will be coming up front. In regards to medical, medical bills, you have to use your own insurance. If you don't, it would be just part of the case. And your bills will really be going sky high. But that will be part of the case. And what we do is we do everything we can to get to compensate you accordingly with your lost wages, your medical expenses, and your devastating pain and suffering. So when do I have to get examined by insurance doctors? That would be if the case is in suit and the company, the uh, defense insurance company, asks you to, then you'd have to go. Is it important to get immediate treatment for injuries? Of course, you have to. It's, you know, you have to take care of yourself. And what if I can't work? Well, if it's a slip and fall type situation, there will be no money coming in for lost wages. It's part of the case, but you're not getting paid from any insurance company up front for any of your lost wages. If it's from a car accident, there'll be no fault coverage and they will pay some of your lost wages up to a certain point. Who pays for medical bills? Medical bills, if it's a car accident, your no-fault insurance will pay. If it's a slip and fall, you have to use your own health insurance. If you don't have any, it is all part of the case. What do I do if I have questions about a case? Well, you should call the Birkin firm. It's 855-FALL, 855-3255. Thanks, Attorney Robert Birkin, for the information you provided and how you and your team can help. I love riding my motorcycle. I wear a helmet and I'm always cautious. But there was at one time when I stopped for a red light at a city intersection, the light turned green and I started to ride. Then a van blew past the red light coming the other way, hitting me hard and throwing me off my bike. It took me many months and many surgeries later to recover. My case went to trial and when the jury heard from my attorney, Robert Birkin, I got a verdict of $1.1 million. Thanks, Robert Birkin.